Production funding for Flying Squirrels Insider is made possible in part by... 811 is the number to call before you dig. 811 will help avoid fines, knocking out utility service, even injury. So call 811 before you dig. And James Limousine, driven to serve Richmond for 22 years. JamesLimousine.com, 804-273-1540. Pitch to Duffy, driven to deep right center field. He'll pull into third with a triple. Flashed into left field. Duffy's got it. The shovel to Tomlinson. Relay on to first and left can set. Swung out and missed. Speared by Blackburn. Parker galloping in. He'll slide and make the catch. Greetings and welcome to the fourth season of Flying Squirrels Insider as we launch FSI for this 2015 Flying Squirrel season with our very special season premiere, which a little later on will include a visit from the one and only Todd Parney Parnell. He's going to let you know why this, at least intending to be the greatest season of Flying Squirrels baseball yet. And before that, we'll take you on a tour of some of the new features out at the Diamond and also meet some new integral members of the Flying Squirrels front office staff. We have no new members on our our panel back at full strength with my good buddies Jay Burnham down there on the far left and Wes McElroy who sits in between us in the middle. But before we hear from those guys and get you ready for the team that is set to embark on Richmond, we also have to welcome another new buddy guys to the show this year. We welcome one of our community partners, Utility Buddy from the City of Richmond Department of Public Utilities. Utility Buddy is instrumental in conveying safety messages about natural gas, stormwater drainage and calling 811 before you dig. I've spent most of the morning trying to work in a way to take a cheap shot at Wes about natural gas, but Wes, I'm going to forego that and just get into the baseball because we've got so much new to talk about. But before we do that, in terms of the staff and players, I do want to talk about the one member of the field staff that returns, Ken Joyce, of course, hitting coach. Great thing for these young prospects, great thing for this show. Absolutely. He's a character. We love Kenny. We always love him during a rain delay, but very good. As you mentioned for the team, <laughs> Here's a guy, I mean, consistency is so hard. It's so tough in baseball, but it's key. And here's a guy who's worked with the likes of Joe Panic, Matt Duffy, Jared Parker. Here's a guy who knows his personnel, not only their swing and not only their style, but he knows, he, he tries to get in their head and, and figure out the little things that make them tick. And he's so good at it. And with so many new guys in this lineup, it's going to be so key to have Kenny back. We're going to talk about a lot of those guys here on this segment. I have already talked with Kenny about potential segments for this show. I know he's eager to be a part of it again this year. Jay, speaking of eagerness, we're eager to welcome a new manager here to Richmond. Of course, Russ Mormon had a lot of success taking the team to the ELCS last year. But Jose Aguasil comes in. What can fans expect from his managerial style? Yeah, we're excited about Jose Aguasil. And don't anticipate about hearing that name. We're going to be calling him Augie, not only on the <laughs> show, but throughout the season. So when you see Augie at the ballpark, make sure you say hi. That's what he responds to. This is a guy that has worked with all these prospects over the past seven years from the ground up. He's been able to develop some of the best defensive infielders in Major League Baseball. Ball, see case in point, Brandon Crawford and the others we've seen over, over through the years. And he's a guy that can communicate, not only with the front office staff, which is key, but also being able to communicate with the players, both Latin and those that are American born. Other things to note about Augie that our fans will learn as he becomes entrenched here in Richmond, he likes a nice loafer and also <laughs> a nice cabernet. Wes, who does? Who stark does? contrast as we complete really the three integral members of the field staff. We've known only Ross Grimsley and we've been privileged too for the first five years, a legend in this game, kind of a more soft spoken figure. Can't say that about the bombastic Steve Klein. He takes over in year six. Yeah, he, here's a character. I mean, we've got a bunch of characters to talk about with this year, uh, but Steve Klein, He's a different breed of cat. 11 years in the majors, he comes in. You mentioned, great word, bombastic. He is going to be a guy that pitchers can relate to, they can talk to, they'll give him a good laugh. He'll also give him a good kick in the pants. But <laughs> he's a guy that knows his personnel. He's a guy who's been around the block 11 years in the majors. He can relate to guys. You know, he's been out of the game since only 2007, which was not that long ago. So he can talk to these guys. And, and while he is lively and, and jovial, He's never going to talk down to you. He's going to talk to these guys, and that's going to be key in the educational process, which at this level it's all about. 
little continuity with the secondary members of the staff as well. Trainer David Getzoff returns along with strength and conditioning coach Adam Vish and clubhouse manager Joe Tarnowski, worth noting as well. They play big roles in these guys' lives. Let's talk about those guys, Jay. We get to the team. It, isn't it interesting? Last year, of course, we had to start with that very heralded group of prospect pitchers that were coming. We're going to get to the pitchers in just a minute, but let's start with the catchers because Jeff Arnold last year, very unfortunate circumstance on opening day, and that threw off those pitchers a bit. Yeah, what was the plan last year? To come in with these prospect <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> well, it was to come in with these prospect pitchers and have Jeff Arnold work with them to bring them to the next level. Unfortunately, that didn't happen for Jeff. Here you are playing in a, in a damp uh, atmosphere in New Britain on opening day. He goes down with, uh, with a knee injury, misses the entire season. Sounds as though he might miss some time at the start of this year. But that was the intention for the San Francisco Giants. Didn't think you'd get that opportunity again, but it looks as though Arnold, when he becomes fully healthy, is going to be the guy that's able to bring these these young arms to the next level and beyond. And you talk about plans, and there is a wild card a little bit this year, and that's Jackson Williams, which yeah. is a name that Squirrels fans will remember all the way back from 2010 and 2011, up in the big leagues with the Rockies, and he's only in the system now because Andrew Susak dinged up his hand in spring training. Susak's been sent to Sacramento. I digress. We're expecting Jeff Arnold to be here at some point when his knee catches up with the rest of his abilities and take over every day here in Richmond. Wes, we also look Look at the outfield right at the top here because that's going to be the strength of this this year's team we feel why is that the case well here's another guy that we're talking about mac williamson another guy that we were sitting around this time last year talking about as a possibility to be up he's going to be up after having tommy john last year which i believe was april of 2014. he'll be here and then a guy that we got a taste of last year daniel carmenel uh, was up for really just the postseason but he hit uh 341 in the last 10 games so we got a, a small sample size Looking forward to seeing more of him out in left field. And what's interesting is what Giants executives have told me is we saw Carbonell in center field during the playoffs last year and played pretty well out there, I thought. But the Giants are intending on moving him to left field, Jay. And that opens up a spot for a name that we were intrigued by a few years ago who's going to finally be here, we think, Jesus Galindo. Yeah, Galindo, who is a 40 stolen base guy down in Augusta and last year in San Jose, has been pretty solid for the Giants, but it's kind of fallen off the prospect radar a little bit. And you mentioned Carbonell, some of the other guys in the outfield. And one of the things that you're going to see a theme of with this team is guys that we saw at the end of last year now taking over major roles this year. And Carbonell will be one. We'll talk about some of the infielders in just a little bit. Galindo, Carbonell, those are two guys that can absolutely burn in the outfield. You mix in some of the power bats that we're going to talk about here in a moment, and boom, you got a pretty solid lineup. I got a nickname idea for Galindo already for the radio. Go, go, Galindo. Okay. I'm looking forward to saying, well, you didn't think it was going to be cheesy? Come yeah. on. <laughs> we're not changing the, the parameters here of FSI in season number four. Wes, something else that probably isn't going to change is first base as we go to the infield. We know those guys, Angel Villalona and Ricky Oropesa, expected to be back in platooning and both trying to break through the next level. They haven't been able to do it the last two years. Yeah, you kind of want to see what you get from both of those guys because you're used to the power of Villalona, banged up a little bit last year. Ricky Oropesa, I mean, here's a guy that we've been waiting on and waiting on. I, I don't know what to expect, if to expect more, but... I mean, time will tell. I mean, we'll find out here as the bats warm up in April and May. We'll see what we get from both of those. Jay, the other three infield spots, Blake Miller is second, Kelby Tomlinson we're hearing at short, and Mitch Delfino at third. They're pretty locked up. Yeah, and, you know, now just kind of occurring to me as we kind of lay this all out in, in vocal form, this is, might be a pretty good team. You know, we mentioned the speed in the outfield. <laughs> you mentioned the power at the, at the corners. And Tyler Horan, another outfielder we didn't even mention, had 25 home runs last year down in San Jose and Augusta. Uh, Violona or Pace, if they can connect. And then you've got the contact guys in the middle of the in the infield you got Delfino a guy who hit 290 last year in San Jose also got a taste of double-a at the end of last year you've got Blake Miller who the Giants we know want to hit at the top of the order two or three he's a guy that hit 300 last year in San Jose so he could be a guy that gets on base quite a bit and then maybe you're able to kind of sneak a guy like Kelby Tomlinson who does have that plus speed that we saw last year at shortstop if you're able to put him down towards the bottom of the lineup you get a pretty good uh, order there for for Augie our first year manager and don't forget about the utility guys quickly Regi Corona Miles Schroeder you know Regi Corona well from the Yankee system we know Schroeder well of course from last year yeah Corona my utility buddy uh, <laughs> with his time with the Yankees and he's been a guy good that's drop. Been, been around for quite some time unfortunately had a lot of injuries Miles Schroeder also a guy that missed some time for some family reasons so either one of those two guys uh, if they're back here this year if they're here this year should be fun to watch all right, guys, let's go to the pitchers. And again, last year we came right in, very hot, talking about the prospect studded rotation. Some of those guys are back.
back, Wes. Yeah, Kyle Crick being one of them. And he's had a really interesting offseason. Got a chance to go and live with Michael Walker of the St. Louis Cardinals. And down the street was Shevley Miller, formerly the Cardinals, now the Braves. Worked with them in the offseason, worked on his confidence, worked on hitting the strike zone. You're talking about a guy who had 175 walks in 277 innings. Worked with those two guys, trained with them in the offseason. He's also been spending a lot of time with Hunter Pence in training camp. Hunter's a guy who is notorious around Giants training camp of a mellow character, getting him to believe in himself, kind of calm himself down, and that's the biggest thing for Kyle. Hitting the strike zone, calming himself down, and trusting in the tools that he's got. Another name that probably will be heard again. He's lagging a couple of weeks behind the arrival of the team is Clayton Blackburn. He's expected to be part of this rotation. Jay, as is Chris Stratton, who looked like he was figuring some things out at the tail end of last year. Yeah, and you go mention those three names. Those are three big prospects for the San Francisco Giants. And as we stated last year on this show and throughout the broadcast over the course of the season, this is their future. You know, when you're picking towards the end of the draft, it's hard to get a lot of front of the, of the rotation type of guys into your system. These are them. Stratton, a former first round pick, a college pitcher. We saw him throw his best outing of the year in the, I think, the series clincher against the Akron Rubber Ducks in the, in the first round of the playoffs. So he's a guy not to be forgotten. And then you supplement those guys with some of the younger players coming up from San Jose. Joe Biagini, a guy that really knows how to eat innings. He led the San Jose team in starts and innings pitch last year. He seems to be a guy that can find the strike zone. Now you're only missing, we mentioned those four guys, that veteran kind of wild card that the Giants always sprinkle on us towards the end of spring training. Jay led me right where I wanted to go. It's almost as if we scripted this show, which <laughs> we'll let you behind the curtain. We did. X Factor guys for the starting rotation. Adalberto Mejia will probably be here. Bobby Evans, Vice President of the Giants has already said when his 50 game suspension is up, he's going to be here. I mentioned Blackburn. I'm still sad from the day that Kelvin Marte left last year. That was a turning point for this team. Guess what? He's expected to come back and don't rule out Jack Snodgrass as well. So the starting rotation, not nearly as solidified as it was going into the season last year, guys, but not nearly the question mark that the bullpen is going to be. Jay, can you help try to answer that question? Yeah, we'll try. And to kind of follow up on the rotation last year, there was more of a six man opportunity for the Giants, and you had some of those veteran guys like Austin Fleet. Snodgrass, you mentioned Kelvin Marte, that could give you innings. So you would hope that you have one of those guys, especially at the start of the season, that can go deeper into the game if your starting pitcher reaches his pitch count. But you talk about the bullpen, we've got to talk about the sidearming guys that we so much love here in Richmond. Before it was Phil McCormick and Edwin Kidarte, Kidarte no longer with the Giants organization. Let's talk about Tyler Rogers, a guy who throws even further from the submarine position. He, we saw him at the end of last year here in Richmond. He's a guy that can really know how to get ground balls and can come in in a, in a fix. Then he got some hard throwers coming out of the back of the bullpen as well. Yeah, Tyler Mazenko, Ray Black, Jeff Soptic. Wes, the interesting thing is none of them might be here opening day. No, no, but watch out for Mazenko. 59 appearances last year, was three away from the, the franchise record or the, the minor league record, so Mazenko's a guy to watch. And Black, you can clock it over to 100 miles an hour. Long guys, Jose Casilla, a guy we know and love yep. here in Richmond, of course. And Joan Gregorio is going to make the transition from starter to reliever, and he's going to begin that path, as I understand it out of the Richmond Bull Pit. Squirrels, of course, defending their Western Division title and also their attendance title. They won them both last year. We're hoping to see you at the Diamond on April 9th. We're just getting started, however, on FSI. When we return, we go to the Diamond, meet a couple of new assistant general managers, and show you some new seats you can sit at. Fourth season premiere of Flying Squirrels Insider continues. As you can see, we have made our way to the diamond. Actually, maybe you can't see because this view will be an entirely different one for you. Joined now by Assistant General Manager of Tickets, Brendan Porter. And Brendan, we're standing inside the HCA stage here, which is a large scale change from the way fans have entered off the boulevard in the first five years. Yep, we uh, basically turn it around 180. So instead of the, the music blaring out towards the street, it's going to be coming into the ballpark now. Not only did we want to turn it around and have the music face the other direction, but basically wanted to get it out of the center of the concourse for other valid reasons, namely crowd flow. Yep, and we're, we've also been able to add some concession areas in here. Uh, it's going to be a really good gathering place before the games. We like to say it's a party when you walk in here, so 
open up gates an hour before game time, come hang out right here and watch some music. Our viewers are very astute, Brett, and they can tell that you've literally run yourself into yeah. the ground preparing for the sixth season of Flying Squirrels Baseball. So we're going to let you go, and we're going to bring in Assistant General Manager of Operations, Ben Rothrock, to take us the rest of the tour. Don't feel like you let FSI down. We'll bring you back sometime in the season, hey, all right? as long as I didn't let you down. Enjoy your tour. Food items are up next, and then the coup de gras, an entire new level of seats here at the Diamond. Coup de what? Assistant General Manager of Tickets, Brennan Porter, replaced by Assistant General Manager of Operations, Ben Rothrock. And Benny's going to be so kind in just a moment to take you on a tour of all the new elements that the Flying Squirrels have installed here at the Diamond for this 2015 season. We're going to start this guided tour where most fans start when they get into the ballpark. They come here hungry, Benny, and you've uh, created some new options for them this year. Take us through what those options are. There's many new options this year, but more importantly, a brand new area. It's something that you'll see as soon as you walk up the front steps. We have a couple different new items. This is only a few of them, but we have the foot-long hot dog. We're bringing this old staple back to the ballpark. A foot-long hot dog. Another item is the uh, buffalo chicken cheesesteak. Something just new added for this year. And what's this third one here? Now the third one, the third one is our prize possession. It's called the Boss Hog. <laughs> Where's Daisy? <laughs> exactly. And what that is, it's a pork roll on a uh, pretzel bun with pepperoni and cheese. And that's basically all you need to say <laughs> about it. That's the Boss Hog. The Diamond has undergone another big facelift in the seating bowl, and that's something that hasn't happened since 2010 when the Flying Squirrels replaced the entire lower bowl or Diamond Club with full down green seats. The Squirrels have once again answered the requests. They have replaced the majority of the upper deck now, as you can see, with those full down green seats as well. Where the green meets the gold is all individual seats. Uh, we replaced a uh, majority of those bench seating or bleacher seats with these green seats, these individual seats for this upcoming season. Uh, like I said, a project that we wanted to take hold to provide a better experience for the fans. As you can see, we're all the way over here on the third base side, Benny. Way but, out there. But as you can also see, we're still, still right up close still, to the still field. really close, yeah, absolutely. Another entertainment zone that we made out of necessity. Um, you know, a few years ago, uh, we decided to make the party decks uh, because of our suites being almost at capacity so we uh, we increased the entertainment zone area and we made the party decks uh, now they're at capacity so we had to create another zone and this is what we came up with this is our party porch it seats 40 people you have your seats table and we have food behind it like a normal catering service and you can see the fact that you've got a surface to eat on here and like you just touched on you've got your own food catered here so you don't have to go to the concession stands it's just pretty much as good as being in one of the suites of the party deck It's always uh, tough sometimes to, uh, to revitalize the same of this magnitude, but we really feel uh, proud and accomplished of what we've done here at the stadium and trying to get this, this fresh new feel as we move into the season. Our thanks to Ben Rothrock, Assistant General Manager of Operations. FSI continues as for the first time we've taken it to FSI Field with our James Limousine Luxury Guest of the Week. Oh, yeah, that is a very luxury title guest of the you. week. Absolutely. You carry a lot of titles these days, sir. <laughs> of course, it is Vice President, COO, General Manager, and we've just gone back to Gert, guy everybody reports to, my good buddy Todd Parney Parnell Parn. Welcome. Hi, Lays. How are you? As you can see, viewers, he has spared nothing with the wardrobe here for the season premiere, and we would expect nothing less. Celebrate the Giants. You, aren't you glad I'm here? Yes. Good segue. <laughs> Why don't we start right there? The full promotional calendar. You have once again proclaimed that this is going to be the grandest year of Flying Squirrels baseball <clears throat> yet, and Orange You Glad It's Fridays is a big part of that. It is. You know, we went away to our retreat. Easy for me to say, right? Went away to our retreat. I get, I'm looking over my shoulder here. It freaks me out <laughs> a little bit. Um, and we looked at the days of the week, and we decided we were going to focus on Friday. So every Friday, the squirrels will wear orange jerseys. Not like this, but orange jerseys, like San Francisco, because the Giants wear orange jerseys on Fridays. And we'll give away free shirt Fridays, and we'll also have a lot of other specials. Uh, throughout the course and, and the gates will open up a half hour early. So we're really focused on Fridays being a good night. In the previous segment on this premiere, we just met Brendan Porter, Ben Rothrock. A lot of fans know them and our viewers certainly do too, but we now know them as assistant general managers. You've restructured the front office and it seems to have a freshening effect heading into year six. Well, uh, Bill Papirniak, our general manager, left to start his own company, Cartridge World in Innsbruck, and uh, we'll miss Bill. He was a vital part of building this franchise into what it is. 
But Ben Rothrock and Brendan Porter have both been here since day one as well. Uh, I know Rothrock all the way back to his days at Altoona as an intern. Uh, both very good up and coming young executives, both good leaders and, and well respected in our front office. Uh, and you know, I, I hope that we've built this organization to the point where it, it's like a good uh, athletic team. You don't rebuild, you reload. And hopefully we're just reloading for the future with those guys. And, and everybody else is going to play pivotal roles as well. You have a saying and it's living it, where it's not just a job, it's who you are in terms of bringing things to fans and bringing people to the ballpark. I personally know your schedule. I know it's ridiculous. You mentioned that you've been with Rothrock now for about a decade. You and I are closing in on that mark as well. I'm going to give you a paperweight. For <laughs> I didn't think that was coming until you're 15. That's fantastic. <laughs> the day is picking up. But you look back on the fact that you've been doing this now almost for three decades, and I guess the simple question is, what continues to drive you to live it as it, as it were? People, very simply, uh, our fans, our owners, you. Our, Me personally? Yes, yes, yes. You, the viewer? <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, our staff, uh, everybody that's involved, not only with baseball in Richmond, but baseball in the country, and, and also Richmond in particular. I mean, I, I get up every morning and I have to make today better than I made yesterday. Uh, it's, it has to happen. You either get better or you get worse. Uh, and as a leader, people follow the leader. And, and if I'm upbeat and I'm excited about being at work, hopefully everybody else will be. And that permeates down to the fans coming into the game as well. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. It's getting up every day, and, and I can't wait to get to the ballpark every single day of my life. Parney is with us. And Parn, obviously in a perfect world and down the road, we all look forward to a new ballpark. But is there a sense of pride taken amongst the staff, and I think I know where it is with you, in terms of having the success that you do and continuing to recreate the diamond as you have once again this year? Well, a lot of the credit for that goes to Chuck Domino. He, he's amazing at looking at a ballpark, in particular the diamond, and seeing places that we can improve. He's, he's a genius at that, and I hope he's not watching this show because, because I never give him compliments. Um, but overall, I think that uh, it is a privilege to be at the diamond, and it's a privilege to make the diamond better every year, and our owners have, have, have given us the checkbook to do so, and a lot of people wonder why. And the reason why is, thanks for asking, <laughs> uh, the fans deserve, as long as we're at the diamond, they deserve to have something new and something better every single year. This year it's the seats, it's the new music stage, which I think you would agree is spectacular, uh, and, and the new food items. So we continue to reinvent ourselves because, again, we don't want to be the same from day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. And this show is an extension, of course, of the Flying Squirrels brand. We don't want that either, and that's why we freshened it up with our new buddy, Utility Buddy here on the show. I think it's an acquaintance that you've actually had for a little while, and Utility Buddy is, is right here to say hello. Come on, wish, come wish, you, wish you the best of luck. Come on in, Utility Buddy. We, we, What's up, Utility Buddy? <laughs> we have not, at this point, gotten Utility Buddy to the point where he could take us to break, so Parn and I still got to do that. Thanks for being here. Home opener, of course, April 9th. Parney will be wearing some semblance of this outfit. Not these. Not, not these. exactly these, though. Everything's fresh and new, as it is on the premiere of FSI, which we wrap up right after this. Well, here we are again, opening another season of Flying Squirrels Insider and preparing for another opening night at the Diamond. Leading me to ponder what makes opening day in baseball such a revered and welcome occasion. If you're anything like me, the return of baseball marks a return of community, a return to normalcy, and a sense of purpose. It is indeed a long road from the final out of one season to the first pitch of another. And in between the two, the outside world seems to have a way of rudely intruding. There is, of course, a yearly scattering that takes place, spreading our ballpark family and friends to literally every corner of the world. And we are forced to stop spending our time wondering about champagne celebrations, batting titles and attendance records, but instead individually focus on our own races in life. 
Like anyone, we face our own adversity and we enjoy our own triumphs. They come in many forms and like the unfortunate snowflakes of a cold winter are unique to each of us. But in the spring, our paths trend back towards intersection. Ball players who have never heard of Richmond will soon call the River City home. Front office members will begin to see their off-season labors take shape all throughout the ballpark. And fans will learn about the new promotions and players that they will take part in and cheer loudly. But most importantly, we come closer to the time when we will come back together at the ballpark for the summer's journey. And that is, of course, the beauty of opening day. Because it represents more than the beginning of a new season, it marks a time when once again we know where we are supposed to be and we can rejoice simply in our place in the game. On April 9th at 635, I know precisely where I will be and I hope to see you there as well because that's the other thing. Baseball always has room for just one more. Here's to the memories we're going to make together during the 2015 season. For all of us here at FSI, I'm John Laser saying we'll see you at the ballpark. Production funding for Flying Squirrels Insider is made possible in part by... The smell of natural gas escaping is a pungent odor like rotten eggs, a bad smell for a really good reason, your safety. If you ever smell the strong rotten egg odor of natural gas, leave the area, go where the smell is no longer present and call 911. And James Limousine, driven to serve Richmond for 22 years. JamesLimousine.com. 804-273-1540.